Welcome, welcome, welcome to this new video. This time we are going to be talking about 10 powerful tools or commands that every IT administrator, power user, or ethical hacker should know when it comes to Windows machines. So if you fall into one of those categories and you manage Windows machines, these are security tools, powerful tools that you should know. Let's start with the first one. The first one is a pretty simple one, but is sometimes overlooked. Who am I? So who am I is going to show you who are you logged in as when it comes to this session right here. The name is self-explanatory. And also you can do who am I forward slash groups. And that's going to show you the groups that this account is a member of. So this tool, this command line utility comes handy. The next one that we're going to be talking about, and I mentioned this in a previous video that I created, is NetAccounts. And NetAccounts pretty much is going to show you the password policy for this computer that you are logged into. If you are logged into a computer that is part of a domain, it's going to show you the password policy for the domain, which is good information if you are a pen tester or an ethical hacker trying to find possible vulnerabilities in the system, the more information you have about the password policy, the better it's going to be. The next one that I'm going to mention is net user, and that's going to list all the user accounts. And if you type that command in a domain controller, it's going to list the user accounts for the domain. Now, uh, I also created a video on the net command. You can also do um, net groups. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, this is for the main controllers for local groups. Is, let me see this. Local group. So it's going to be net local group. And that's going to show you the local groups again on this computer that you are logged into. And this comes super useful because you could see you are collecting information. You are getting information about who the user you are logged in as is, if the user is a member of any um, administrative group, and it's going to list the groups right in here. The next one would be net uh, share, and everything is going to come from the net uh, suite. And as you could see, it's going to list the default shares on this computer. We have the hidden share, the, the root, we have the IPC, and we have the admins. So that is super useful command, actually. Uh, for you to know, to get information about these systems and learn more about the system you're, that you're logged in under. The next one that we're going to get into is going to be a task list. And that's going to, uh, if we use with SVC, it's going to show all the running tasks with the services attached to them, which is super useful. What's not going to be useful is how much information you're going to get. Oh, task list. Oh, I mistyped it. So let me come here. What's not, what's not useful is going to be uh, all this information going in front of you super fast so you could do um, pipe more to stop that one screen at a time. And as you could see, you're going to see the process ID right here. And you're going to see the process name that is going to be listed in this column right here. So you could do uh, Q to finish that. Another useful command, and I believe that I created a video on this command itself, is just netstat. But a quick um, command for you to have handy is netstat minus anob. And anob is not a word, it's A-N-O-B, which are different uh, switches that you can use with the command. And that's going to show you all the listening ports on the system. And it's going to show you the processes that are associated to that as well. So if we do a pipe more, so we stop the screen as you could see it's going to show you the protocol in this case it's tcp the local address the foreign address that is connected to listening and the process id and if we scroll down let's just do tap this one more time until we get to the uh, internal ip addresses which is this one right here as you could see this is the protocol the uh, source ip address destination ip address and we're going to have the process id and we're going to have the uh, process as associated to it, which in this case is Slack, which is super useful. This is something that I use quite often when doing malware analysis. You want to see what process the uh, malware is is um, running on. 
So that's super useful. Let's move to another command. And in this case, we're going to use task scheduler. Task schedule is ver it's a very powerful command, actually, and many people overlook it. So schedule task and you could do a query, right? And then you're going to list the uh, tasks in verbose mode. So pretty much what you're going to see here is everything, including when and how this is going to run. The information may be overwhelming, as you can see right here. But you could send this to a file by doing, uh, by piping it to a file. You could do my tags.txt. And then that is going to create that file. If I do type my tags.txt, no. You're going to see that in there. So another thing that is not a command itself, but I just showed it to you, you can uh, forward the result of a command with the uh, greater uh, than sign right here, and you can append to it by adding another one. So this is an old school thing that it's good to know. It comes handy when you spend a lot of time on the command line. Uh, for, uh, let's see, let me clear this. For more serious, if you want to know your Windows Defender status on this computer, you could do MP computer status, and that's going to show you the status of Windows Defender. And again, this is something that you can script out and send it over to all computers and have those results be reported or written to a file somewhere else. So the, um, you know, the sky's the limit when it comes to creating, uh, uh, creating scripts. But you get the idea. Once you do it on the local computer, what you need to do to do it on the network, you just pretty much think about how you send it over. If you want to see the hot patches that are installed on this system, you could do hot fixes or hot fix, I should say. And that's going to show you the hot fix on this computer. Uh, and the installation day, which is uh, super useful. And the last command that I'm going to mention is find. Uh, but in this case, the way that I like using that is similar to the same way that you can use grep on, on Linux. And you could do something like uh, to isolate the, um, the uh, specific content out of our results. As, remember that we, when we were running uh, these commands that were showing pages and pages of information and I show you how to stop there with the pipe more you what you could do instead of stopping that result every screen with the pipe more you can just uh, search for one specific term for instance if you want to do uh, net user right let's do this net user and we do uh, come here find admin oh I typed a question mark it says uh, and I'm getting parameter format is not correct the reason for that is because in this case the uh, find, uh, define command in this context is going to work only from the command line, not PowerShell. So if I come here to the command line and I type net user space find admin, uh, that's going to show it to you right there. So there are hundreds and hundreds of utilities and commands that are going to make your life easier when you're working on Windows, and these are... The commands that I've seen are more relevant when it comes to security and the day-to-day -day security related things. You can also um, type uh, commands to uh, query the event logs and show you a specific events from the event logs. I found that more difficult to do on a, when I'm doing a, a, a one-off, like a single thing, I'd rather go to event viewer and search from there, use the filters. But if you're scripting this to run this on multiple computers or running this on multiple systems, you may want to get uh, more and more um, information and more familiar with especially the commands that you can use in PowerShell. So I hope this video was useful to you. It was a quick video. 
going down to the point if you found this information useful all i ask you to do is to click on the like button consider subscribing to the channel as well and also uh leave uh, a comment or a questions in the comment sections and i try to answer the question you know as soon as i can or if you have some if you have something nice to say that's going to help us with the algorithm as well so thanks for watching and i'll talk to you on the next video